Hi, this is Jay Billis of ESPN, and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. The ML Sports Platter, back with you all over the major platforms. Apple, Stitcher, Deezer, Google, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts on your smartphone device. Download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five-star review. All that stuff helps an awful, awful lot. This podcast, along with my other shows on Bill's Brawl, all a part of the Brawl Network. Make sure you get us on Twitter at Network Brawl and me on Twitter at Mike L Sports. Big time thanks to Camilla's Golf Club, the Allen Angus Pub, our good friends over at Ken's Auto Detailing, and Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual New York State, tax efficient retirement planning with Brian. He has clients all over the country. And let me tell you something, my wife and I, we we're in a kind of a weird spot, like no kids yet. I'm a little bit older than she is. You know, way down the line is college for kids, <clears throat> if they even go now. Who knows what kind of an atmosphere we're going to have years from now. Worried about the day-to-day, but then looking at the financial picture and going, man, probably should get something in line. And the financial picture now looks a lot brighter, and it's because of Brian. So make sure that you go with Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual New York State, advisors.massmutual.com. He's on LinkedIn and on Facebook. I'll continue to share his stuff out there uh, to you as well. I do some extra posts here at the back end of this week. But uh, get your financial future in order today with Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual, New York State. So this podcast is a full 2021 New York Yankees preview. And I'm just going to kind of go across the board with um, you know some predictions, some expectations. I'll have a full Major League Baseball preview. In the, in the coming days, weeks, I don't know when I'm going to do it. Uh, I might want to let some spring training, um, you know, games take place and all the rest to, to kind of get a look and a feel for some teams. But but spring training really, for me, is, 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 is pretty close to pointless. Um, but this is kind of a general synopsis of where the Yankees are at going into 2021, what the highs are, what the lows are, everything in between, expectations, predictions, you know, all those different things, what the lineup looks like, the bench, uh, the rotation, you name it. So, you know, first things obviously first with this team. They're coming off another year where it, it, it's kind of the same thing. And it's been going on for, for, for a few years now. And this is where... Again, if you're just new to listening to me with the Brawl Network, many of you have listened to me for, I don't know, 20 years, you know, with my Syracuse, Albany, SB Nation, and Yahoo shows. Um, I understand that you can't win every year. I I get that. You cannot win it every year in any sport. It's wildly difficult to win divisions. I don't care how much money you spend. You have to spend money right. You have to be real. You have to be be, uh, consistent, sustainable. Um, all those things are super hard in sports. Just look at what happened to the Kansas City Chiefs, right? They couldn't, they didn't repeat this year. They did not repeat. And it's just, it's hard to even get there. It's hard to win it. It's harder to repeat. So I'm not saying the Yankees have to win the World Series every year. But where I've been really frustrated with Brian Cashman, it, it, it's, it's where he constructs the roster for the postseason. The last several years, the Yankees in 2020, the Yankees in 2019, you know, the Yankees in 2018, when they lost to Boston, the Yankees in 17, uh, I don't really, I'm not going to go down that road as much, only because, you know, they, I think kind of played with house money, you know, and it was, they arrived early with a young nucleus, and, you know, it was sort of fun, and holy crap, like, the Yankees is an underdog, kind of, they were a fun, feel-good story, a lot of young guys, but, like, that's over, because right after that, when I thought they had figured it out, they traded Andrew Miller, they traded Chapman, they got a boatload of prospects, you get Glaber Torres, I thought they figured it out, and then they go out and get Giancarlo Stanton, they trade for an, an albatross horrendous contract. Now, I understand Stanton had a really great postseason last year, but, you know, I mean, the team overall, <clears throat> it's funny. The team got last year in the postseason two things that they haven't gotten the last couple of years, and then everything else fall, fell apart, right? 
So for the longest time, what was I clamping, chopping the bit at? They got to get a starter. They got to get a starter. They got to get a shutdown guy. They got to get, well, they got Garrett Cole. And then the rest of the pitching situation fell apart. Severino goes down with the Tommy John. Domingo Herman has the domestic situation off the field. You've got injuries galore. You're waiting for Montgomery to get back. You have no idea what you have in all, a lot of the other youngsters and Davey Garcia and company. James Paxton turns out to be a disaster, colossal waste of time. Jay Happ, useless. So everything else happened after you got the ace, right? Plus, John Carlos Stan actually hit the baseball in October. <laughs> you know? And then it was multiple other guys who froze in the moment. And the Yankees in 20... 20- 20, they did what they've done, you know, every other time. I mean, you know, they had to play the league wild card game thing, right? Expanded playoffs, blah, blah, blah. They didn't win the division. They beat Cleveland to a pulp 12 3, right? And they, you know, crushed. I mean, just Shane Bieber had no shot, right? The All Star game MVP, former. And 10 9, they won in game two. And you're like, man, maybe this is a little, you know, because they came back and they were clawing and it was punch for punch. And there were a little, there, 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 there were some signs there where you said, holy cow, this team's got maybe the look of something here. And then they lost to Tampa. And I didn't feel good going into that game five whatsoever. I mean, I don't care if they had won game four. I, you know, I didn't feel good about any of it. And they lost because they couldn't score runs again. And the starting pitching, you know, just wasn't good enough. Tanaka was brutal in Game Three. Hap was awful in 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 Game Two in 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 relief, which again horrible move by the Yankees in terms of pulling Davy Garcia with the analytics. We know Tampa did that later on in the World Series with Blake Snell, who's now in San Diego. Um, you know, it, 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 and obviously Cole. You could even argue got you know got yanked um, after six, a little too early. Between not enough pitching, not enough total timely hitting, a taxed bullpen because the starting pitching was taxed as well, right? Because of those things, the same old things, the Yankees couldn't get out of their way again in the postseason. And it's been the same thing for for multiple years now. Not enough starting pitching which transfers into an exhausted bullpen by the time you're getting to October or in October. There's not enough timely hitting. And then the analytical approach. You know, this team really, I just don't see them being any different is where I'm going with this. You know, do I think they're a really good regular season team? Hell yes. I think they're going to hit a ton of home runs. Woohoo! Um... Do I think that they're super talented? Yep. Woohoo! You know, do I think Garrett Cole could win a Cy Young? Sure do. You know, do I like do I like a couple of little things that maybe happen in the offseason in terms of you know, signings and 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 you know, what they did from a a creative standpoint, I guess. You know, there's a couple of guys who in the bullpen I think could help this team, you know, a lot more. Um, you know, for example, I think it's a heck of a lot smarter to, you know, look at a Darren O'Day, you know, and a Justin Wilson than it is at about a Vino. I mean, you're taking chances on, on Corey Kluber, of course, you know, and Jameson Tyen. I, I, I get that. Um, a lot of damaged goods there. We know that Corey Kluber is, is, is up there in age. He's nowhere near the Cy Young form. He's had just head to toe, I mean, injury after injury after injury, um, you know, but he's going to be a guy who, you know, wasn't brought in to just be like, yeah, let's kind of try it, you know, because the one thing that I hear a lot from Yankee Twitter, which is one of the worst Twitter uh, fan bases out there, it's, well, you know, you got nothing to lose. Really? You sure? (laughs) Did they bring Corey Kluber in to just kind of give you a couple of decent months and then we'll figure it out after that? You know, no, they didn't. They brought Kluber in to hopefully be a middle-of-the-rotation guy to replace Masahiro Tanaka, to possibly replace Domingo Armand, to possibly replace Luis Severino for a four-month stretch. <laughs> they did the same thing when they traded for Jameson Tyan. I mean, that, that's why they brought these guys in. It's easy to look at and go, well, 
you know, the Yankees, between all the other things that are going on, between Domingo Herman and between getting Corey Kluber and Ty, uh, 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 and Tyon, you've got you've got a lot of guy uh, Jamison Tyon. Um, you know, there there there's some options there, and it's better to have more pitchers than not. You know, and I should also mention that I've heard it a million different ways. Oh, not a million, but a couple different ways. Jamison Tyon, Jamison Tyone. I've heard both uh, in games by analysts. Um, <clears throat> we should just call him JT this year, right? Remember when we went into the, is it Loisaga? Is it Loisiga? Is it, remember the beginning with Jonathan Loisaga? Just people called him Johnny Lasagna, you know? <laughs> But Tyone, Tyon, Tyone, Ty, Jamison Tyone, I guess is 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 I guess more of that way than Tyon, Jamison Tyon, um, Jamison Tyone. I mean, there. It's easy to say. Put it this way: It's easy to say from a Yankee perspective, a fan perspective. It's better to have way more arms than not. You can never have enough pitching, as the cliche goes, right? Okay, well that's fine. But in the particular case of the New York Yankees, they ain't the Dodgers. The Dodgers go get Trevor Bauer. They already got Walker Bueller. They've already got Clayton Kershaw in the middle of rotation. They already have a ton of rotation depth. You know, they might have seven guys, but all seven of those guys are legitimate guys who can help them and a couple guys who can be long men. If the Yankees lose a pitcher or two in the rotation, they're going to be toast again. It's that simple because look what happened in the postseason. The analytic move was bullshit, obviously, with benching Garcia and then giving the ball to Jay Happ. J. Happ was also awful. So when he was put into that position, even though it was a bad decision, just before Happ even takes the mound, right? I mean, if Happ had gone out and mowed him down, obviously Brian Cashman in the Dork Cave and Boone, who follows the Dork Cave and the nerds, uh, as as the Ball Nine and Kevin Kernan guys would say, you know, follows the nerds along the way. Um, you know, they would have been praised, right? I mean, of course they would have been. They would have been praised. But he got shelled, and it showed that he was brutal. And if he started the game, I think he would have gotten shelled. Point is, Jay Happ and Masiro Tanaka, they're at the end of the rope. They don't have enough pitching. They haven't had enough pitching. Brian Cashman has not gotten them enough pitching. In this particular instance, Jamison Tyone, they go out and get Corey Kluber. Herman is on the roster, apologize to teammates and all the rest. We'll see how it goes. Zach Britton, obviously very vocal, has every right to be. I don't blame him. People are getting on him. I think it's, I think it's horse crap that people are getting on him. Like, you can't, like, the experiment of Luis Sessa has got to stop, right? Like, that May 14th day, a month into the season, and you've got a monster, and I'll get to the injuries in a minute, you got a monster amount of injuries on the roster, a couple in the, po- in, 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 the in, in, in the rotation. The, the whole, like, Luis Sessa band-aid starter stuff, it's got to stop, you know? Like, enough is enough. It's got to stop. So at some point, whether it's, Davy Garcia, Domingo Herman, who I'm not thrilled with being on the roster as it is. I'm not. I, I, you know, I don't like what happened there. I also Chapman, the guy. I'm over the guy. I'll get to him in a minute too. But between Herman and Garcia, it is what it is. Kluber, and I don't like it. Montgomery, Severino, right? Like Tyone, like these guys. And I just listed. Let's see what is that. Tyone, Montgomery, Severino, Kluber. Herman, Garcia, Garrett Cole is your ace. After Cole, we have no idea what the rotation looks like. That's seven pitchers. Cole doesn't count because he's the ace he's in. So you have six other guys to fill five spots. Severino's not even ready yet. We know that. So there's your other guys, right? Where are they going to where are they going to line up? If one or two of those guys goes down, <clears throat> I don't want the Luis Sessa experiment. I don't want to play around with Jonathan Loisaga. I mean, apparently the, the Yankees still don't even know who the hell he is. I mean, are they looking at Albert Abreu this year, finally, you know, to be like a bridge guy? I, I, I mean, it's possible. <clears throat> but, like, the pitching is just not there again. And I start with that because it's the same thing every single year. And I'm not saying they should have broken the bank for Trevor Bauer or gone, you know, but I just don't. I mean, they're taking chances on Tyone and Kluber, and that's fine. I like the chances taken. But I don't think as much, it's not like really, it's not really as much risk-reward. And, and, and well, you can never have enough pitching. I think the Yankees went out and got these guys because they want them in there, and they need them in there. They need one of those two guys to pan out. 
they might need both of them to pan out. And that is scary business. They've relied on, they're relying on Kluber and Tyone. They relied on James Paxton. They relied on Sonny Gray. I mean, this is what Cashman's roster looks like. For all the people who slurp Brian Cashman, these are your pitchers. For the New York freaking Yankees, a team that surpasses $200 million every year in payroll, has more resources, more analytics, more this, more that, more everything, the Yes Network, and they can't seem to ever get enough pitching. The New York Yankees. It's like LSU football. Can't find a quarterback ever. Finally got one in Joe Burrow. You could almost call it luck with a transfer from Ohio State. And everything bled in. You get Joe Brady, you get all the you know, the weapons were there, but you weren't going to win a title without a quarterback. Burrow comes in, one of the great single seasons in college football history. Now LSU doesn't have a quarterback again. Who knows when they'll get one again? And it's LSU. They re- routinely put in top one, top three, top two, top one, you know, amount of players, football factory type things in college football, routinely in the NFL. They're always top five, top three, sometimes number one. How do they not have a quarterback? How do the New York Yankees not have enough pitching every year? So I'm not thrilled about that. And because of that, of course, we're going to see Zach Britton. We're going to see Darren O'Day. We're going to see, you know, all these Michael King. We're going to see Araldis Chapman. We're going to see Zach Britton. We're going to see all these bullpen guys, Justin Wilson, eventually get tired because they're going to have to be in there all the time because starting pitching is going to get taxed and the Yankees are too analytical. So those two things haven't changed. From a lineup standpoint, there's a lot of other things that haven't changed as well. The Yankees are still committed to Gary Sanchez. I had somebody commit uh, a comment to my uh, Pinstripe Passion page, which was hysterical. Oh, I think Sanchez has the most you know, hot take here. Well, no, you don't. If you're a troll, you don't have hot takes because you don't work in sports media. Gary Sanchez is a 28-year-old, or he's he's the guy on a hot take. Gary Sanchez is the guy with the most upside on the Yankee roster. I commented back. I'm like, wow, it's good to know. He's 28 years old. I mean, how long are we going to do this song and dance with Gary Sanchez? <clears throat> you know, explodes on the scene, quickest MLB catcher to 100 home runs, 16 and 17, playing at MVP level. Disappears, regresses, puts on weight. Poor effort. Still calls an average game. Like, when's it end with Gary Sanchez? Are the Yankees going to wait until he's 30-32 to make a decision on this guy? Or, you know, I mean, I thought last year was the year where we said, okay, this is the year we'll, we're, where we'll know. You know, I mean, Aaron Boone went into the into the season. In the last couple of years, he's committed to Gary Sanchez in the offseason. You know, he took that trip to the Dominican Republic. He saw a new Gary Sanchez. He saw a workout routine that blew him away. You know, I don't know if that was Aaron Boone being the cuddly, you know, dad in the clubhouse. Is You know, why they hired him to coddle all the players. But it didn't change Sanchez. The offseason thing didn't change him one bit, you know. It didn't. <clears throat> so you're dealing with the same BS at, at catcher. I would almost rather have had the Yankees go out and get somebody else I'm not saying pay X amount of money for JT Real Muto, but somebody to platoon with Higashioka who calls a better game, maybe like from the left side of the plate, maybe a, a different deal. Maybe you make a play at a Yachty Molina. I, I don't know. I, I This whole thing, I just, you know, I, I'm over Sanchez. He might prove me wrong this year, but so far he's been the same player. Meanwhile, I think the infield's pretty good. I don't worry about the infield. Sure, I think the Yankees have too much right-handed power hitting, of course. But, you know, if I had to get rid of a guy, it's always Stanton. It's not going to be Luke Voigt. I mean, I like Luke. I think he's a fan guy. I think he's fun. I think he's a clubhouse guy. He obviously can bop the ball to the ballpark. I think he needs to expand his game a little bit in terms of hitting to all sides, to all areas of the field. But again, part of that's the analytic nonsense. Nobody's going to try to tell Luke Voigt, "Hey, man, try to hit it, you know, try to hit a, uh, you know, ball in the gap, or you know, drive it the other way." Of, you know, if he's going to drive it the other way, he's got to hit a home run. Blah blah blah. Baseball these days. Blah blah blah. But overall, I like the infield. I think you got stars. I think you got depth. I think you got chemistry. I think you got ability. You got leadership. Luke Voigt. To DJ LeMahieu, to Torres, who again was brutal at shortstop. We'll see what happens there. The Yankees, 
uh, you know, I thought could have gone after maybe a shortstop move Torres to his natural position. Uh, at second, maybe you try to do more LeMahieu. At first, Luke Voigt DHing when you give Stanton the days off, etc. But they don't want to keep both Voigt and Stanton out of the lineup that much together. Um, but we'll see if Torres can rebound. Obviously, I know the kid is, um, you know, he's uh, 24 years old, 5 years oldish, right? And uh, uh, he turns 25, I think, this year. Uh, you know, and then at third, you've got Gio Urshela, who's terrific. Uh, and Duhar, maybe this is a year where the Yankees are kind of like, eh, maybe this is maybe maybe this is the year we find out about Miggy. Uh, last year, coming off that injury, you know, he was playing at a rock star status. I mean, home runs and doubles and all the rest before he got injured. Although the Yankees hang on to players, I mean, they've hung on to Frazier, they've hung on to Sanchez. So maybe just Miguel and Duhar isn't going anywhere. <laughs> you know, and he's got to play for a spot and play for depth and get in there. Um, I would love to see the Yankees work him in and he rebounds but doesn't get back to his old form and the Yankees trade him and get a pitcher at the break. I think that's what he should be used for. I think that's what uh, Thero Estrada should be used for. I think that's what Tyler Wade should be used for. I don't know why they're hanging on to all these guys. Tyler Wade is kind of a lunch bucket guy who goes in there, but can't you package a Wade and an Andujar and somebody else in double A and go get a freaking arm Tyler Wade ain't going to win you a World Series, man. An extra pitcher is going to win you a World Series. I'm going to get into the outfield. I'm going to get into win projection and a few other things here on the 2021 Yankees preview, all on the ML Sports Platter. Don't forget to visit pinstripepassion.com for my MLB and off-season news and notes. Plus, I'm doing some contributing articles to Table Hopping in Central New York. Uh, That's a great monthly magazine with a lot of entertainment and arts and fun. Um, Write for them with an ML Sports take and... Of course, uh, you can uh, catch me uh, on all the social media platforms as well. YouTube, IGTV, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, uh, you name it there. And I'm contributing some articles to Ball 9 as well with Chris Vitale, Kevin Kernan, and the gang over there. So make sure you go hit up Ball 9 all over the platforms. Follow and uh, check all, all that out. More on the Yanks upcoming season next. On the ML Sports Platter, brought to you by Empower Federal Credit Union and Bryant and Stratton College. ML Sports Platter, back with you. Spotify, Google, Apple, anywhere else. Download, subscribe, feedback, and five-star reviews are appreciated. When you look at the outfield, we know that it's the heavy hitters. It's the big names. It's John Carlos Stanton. It's Aaron Judge. It's, you know, Aaron Hicks. I mean, again... Now I get into kind of layering the outfield with the situation at hand. You know, is this team good enough? Is this team going to be healthy enough to finally get over the hump and win the whole thing? Because that's the expectation. There's no doubt in anybody's mind at this point, right? I mean, that's the expectation. That's what, you know... The Yankees are in that world every year, fairly or unfairly. They haven't won since 2009. Many other teams have. Again, not saying that you have to win every year. But I think in 20 years for the Yankees to win one, I I think they're probably due. Well, a lot of it's going to ride on those guys I just mentioned. Aaron Hicks, switch hitter, etc., plays center field. Is he even going to stay healthy? And I've been saying this for a long time. I did a podcast on it not too long ago. I've done a million videos on it not too long ago. Um, you know, and Clint Frazier is going to get a lot more time in left field. They brought Brett Gardner back for the 100th year as a role player, etc. Um, here, here, here's the here's the thing. I am not thrilled with the age of this roster. I don't know if a lot of people have been paying attention, but like this isn't a spring chicken situation. This isn't the Braves. This isn't half of the San Diego Padres or more. You don't have a core piece, a a, a face of baseball type guy. You don't have a top five. I mean, I might put DJ LeMahieu. I probably would put him in there as a top 10 player in baseball. I don't know if I'd put top five. When you're the Yankees, you know, you usually have a top five player in baseball. Even when Jeter wasn't, quote unquote, the best player in baseball, he was, I think, still a top five because of you know, him putting up pretty solid numbers, but the intangibles and the leadership and all the stuff that we talked about with Jeter, the winning, the clutchness, 
I would still say he was a top five guy. I think the Yankees have always at one point in time when they've been at the top or near the top, they've had a top five player or pitcher, right? I mean, they have. 96, Andy Pettit was, you know, in the top few for the Cy Young, right? Um, You know, Jeter was Rookie of the Year. Um, You know, during the 90s dynasties, it it, it was any particular year you could go any different direction with guys, right? This team doesn't have a top five guy. You know, they don't have Acuna. They don't have Tatis Jr. You know, they don't have Mike Trout. They don't have, you know, anybody like, they don't have a Machado, who I really wanted, by the way. You know, they don't have a, a couple of year ago Bellinger. You know, they don't have Christian Yelich. You know, they don't have a Frankie Lindor. These guys in the outfield, these guys, some of them in the infield, they don't have that guy, and they also have a roster that's getting up there. I mean, Sanchez, this is a young man's game now, man. It's not like, hey, go off the scrap heap, 29-30. Oh, bring in three or four more veterans. No, 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 no. This is a young game, a young roster. Gary Sanchez, 28. Higashioka, 30. One years old, he'll be. You know, and Duhar now is all of a sudden 26 years old upcoming, you know? Estrada, 26. Mike Ford, you know? Mike Ford is upper 20s. You know, DJ LeMayhew is 33 years old, 32, 33 years old. He'll be 33, I think, in July. You know, Glaber Torres for a little bit there was, wow, man, spring chicken, he's super, he'll be 25 this year, mid-20s, right? He's still fine, I guess. Luke Voigt, 30 ish you know Brett Gardner 37 years old all the talk oh Clint Frazier he's 26 Aaron Hicks 30 31 ish with a bunch of years left on the contract Aaron Judge upper 20s John Carlos Stanton 30 31 ish Mike Talkman 30 31 ish dude Dudes, gals, Yankee fans, <laughs> this roster is older than you think, and a lot of it has to do with the Stanton Judge situation in the outfield. You know, we're waiting to see if the Yankees commit to Judge as well. But you know, again, Hicks, Judge, Stanton, are they going to stay healthy? And I've got some depth, obviously, with Gardner and Frazier, Estevan Florial. How much will he play? But I don't trust this medical team. I don't trust this staff. You know, we're going to see some Mike Talkman, maybe, right? Some Tyler Wade. We're going to see some Estrada. We're going to see maybe some Miggy Andujar. I don't trust these guys to stay healthy. What have they proved it? And another thing that's really in common from last year, the year before, etc., with lacking starting pitching, a tax bullpen, lacking timely hitting, too much, you know, too many analytics, is that all these guys who haven't accomplished anything in the Yankee uniform, they're all talking a great game before the season. I mean... Jarek Jeter and the gang, Tino and Paul O'Neill and Bernie and Mo and Posada and Pettit, they never talked like this. David Wells, Jimmy Key, David Cohn, El Duque Hernandez, Jeff Nelson, Wetland, Graham Lloyd, Ramiro Mendoza, Joe Torre, Don Zimmer. They, 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 they never talked like this. John Carlos Stanton, the Yanks are ready to take that leap. Oh, really? Okay. Prove it to me then. Meanwhile, I think this team is a 95 to 100 win team. I think they're a really great regular season team. I think that they're going to hit a ton of home runs. Fans are going to be back eventually. They're going to kind of slowly but surely come back. Probably start with three, four, five ish thousand people in the stands. It'll get up to maybe 10, 15. I don't think that it'll be sold out at any point before. I, uh, an All Star break. I know they're going to try to have an All Star game. Uh, All Star game, but this is uh, this is a, a you know this is a regular season team. They're going to hit a ton of home runs. They're going to love the short porch. They're going to love Yankee Stadium. They're going to win a lot of games. Seven to five, ten to eight, seven to four, eight to three, nine to seven, twelve to eight, fourteen to eleven. They'll win some in between. Two to one, three to two. Great, but it's going to be the same type thing. Lack starting pitching. Taxed bullpen throughout the regular season. 
They're going to hit a ton of home runs. They're going to be able to feast on rotations with three, four, five guys who are weak like theirs, and that's when you get into those high-scoring games. The analytics are going to be covering this rotation, covering this roster, covering the starting lineup. I don't see change. I'm tired of hearing it about the Yankees. I'm tired of hearing Aaron Judge saying about how he's setting the bar high. I'm tired of hearing about John Carlos Stanton, who hasn't accomplished anything. I'm tired of listening to the bullpen guys say that they have the best bullpen in baseball again this year. I'm tired of it. Go win a World Series. At least get to a World Series. Perform in the postseason. It's put up or shut up time, man. Luis Severino will be back to full strength. We're counting on Clint Frazier. This is finally his year. Gary Sant, it's the same stuff in Tampa. Every year is the same. This is the breakout year for Sanchez. We love what we're seeing out of the young starters. Stanton has high expectations, ready to take a leap. Aaron Judge has this the bar the bar set high. Our goal is to win the World Series. Oh, it's so great to have the clubhouse guy Brett Gardner back. We're super excited about the guys we acquired. We th- you know, Cashman, Boone. We think they can help us. All the rhetoric, all the cliches, all the BS been going on for several years and then in the postseason more starting pitchers shove it up your bunghole and they're getting the timely hits with two outs and men on base and you're not and the bullpen is taxed and the analytics get in the way and it's the same thing every year dear new york yankees prove to me that i'll be wrong prove it go prove it i think they win between 95 and 100 games i think they're going to win the al east by a couple of games over toronto and then I think they're going to lose in the playoffs and fall short of the of the World Series. Somewhere. Where? I don't know. Do they fall in the ALCS? Do they fall in the Division Series? I don't know. But I think that's going to, what's going to happen for the Yankees. They'll be a real fun roller coaster to go up and down with on in the regular season, man. Let me tell you. But be a, I think it's going to be a rough postseason again. I hope I'm wrong. I mean, obviously, I want them to win the World Series. I'm ready. I'm a diehard Yankee fan. You know, but I just don't see it. And I hope I'm wrong. I really do. ML Sports Platter, brought to you by our good friends at Hides of Liverpool, the Vince Guerra Consulting Group, Welch & Company Jewelers, and Liverpool Physical Therapy. You may or may not know, if you live in the greater New York State, no doctor prescription is necessary for the first 10 physical therapy visits in New York State. So if you're just close enough to Liverpool, you know, you're listening from Utica, you're listening in Central New York, you're listening in Rochester, wherever, and you're looking for a new physical therapy spot, and people travel to go get the care that they need, go see my friends at Liverpool Physical Therapy. Post-op, whatever the case can be, they'll help you out at Liverpool Physical Therapy. Big tip of the cap, thank you as well. The Barks and Rec Doggy Daycare are good, good friends over at Empower Federal Credit Union and Sit Means Sit Syracuse, the best dog training in central New York, the greater area. Any dog, any breed, any behavior, they'll take your pup in and uh, train big time and have that pup going around your house, playing with kids, any kind of issue or problem that comes to the horizon, they'll help you out. It's the best dog training around. Sit Means Sit Syracuse is a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.